world keeps spinning Maximilian Must Know. Got one for you guys today that really isn't a sleeper. It's a little bit controversial, I would say. It, it gets overlooked a lot. Some people like it. Uh, some people don't. It's a designer scent that many have a uh, feel have, has a niche quality to it. And it's from the house of Narciso uh, Rodriguez. And it is called Narciso Rodriguez for him. And so before we actually break down the fragrance, uh, let's talk a little bit about the house. Narciso Rodriguez is actually, um, I think a lot of people don't know this, an American house. Uh, Narciso Rodriguez was American born. He is of Cuban descent. He was actually born in New Jersey. He studied at um, the very famous Passin, Parsons School of Design. He studied fashion there. And at a different point in his career, he actually worked both at Ann Klein and Calvin Klein. And interesting, interestingly enough, when he was at Ann Klein, he worked under uh, Donna Karen. Really the year that everything kind of crystallized and came together for him was, was 1995. Uh, at that time, he actually had two different, two different roles. He was design director at TSC in New York, and he was also design director at Cerruti uh, in Paris, you know, Cerruti. And um, he actually did, around that time, the wedding gown that Carolyn Bessette uh, war when she wed JFK Jr. Of course, not, not too long after that, they both died in a very uh, tragic plane accident, but uh, where, where JFK Jr. was was flying the plane. But that really sort of helped cement the, the Rodriguez name. Um, and all of that led to his own label, which he was able to, to get going in 1997. Right off the bat, he was really popular. He won Best New American Design Award from um, from Vogue and VH1, and another one from the Council of Fashion Designers in, in the United States. Uh, he also, in that in that time period, was also serving as creative director at Lowe uh, in New York City. So he, he was just really doing a lot of things. He's been really big since then. And actually, he really sort of popped back into the public eye in, in um, I think it was 2009, when Michelle Obama wore one of his dresses to an appearance and it caused this huge fashion debate. Uh, it was this black and red dress, I remember it, and the debate was whether it was cool or chic or just ugly. I thought it was dope, I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm not a huge fan of like uh, Michelle Obama's style, but I thought that was a, a really, really nice dress. Actually, I do, she does dress pretty well, actually, I'm bugging, especially for our first lady, she, she dresses pretty well. And so this first fragrance, the first fragrance from NR, Narcisa Rodriguez, came out in 2003, and it was just simply titled for her. Uh, it was actually done in conjunction with Shishido's uh, Beauty Prestige brand. Uh, so they did this one, and then they dropped the men's one in 2007. As of today, there are 27 fragrances in the lineup. They continue to do them with Beauty Prestige. Beauty Prestige also does uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier and Issey Miyake. So they're really successful. They're a cash cow. Uh, in their fragrance division. This isn't the only men's scent um, for Nardis or Rodriguez. There are actually three flankers to this guy. There's Blue Noir, which is, I'm filming this, I think it's just been released. There's a Parfum version of this, and there's a Musk version of this. So I would really like to get the Musk version. I heard some early stuff about the, the Blue uh, version. I heard it's really similar similar to Declaration by Cartier, so I'll check it out. But if that's true, I probably won't purchase it since I have Declaration. I think it's a really, really good fragrance. Uh, but I definitely want the Musk version of this one. That one I know that I want. Other than that, you know, this isn't a house that's really on my radar in terms of fashion or fragrances. I know he does do uh, some men's clothes. I think most of it is couture. I don't. I don't think most of it is is off the rack. Uh, and so, because of that price point, it's not stuff that has really resonated with me personally. 
Um, so this one, as we said, dropped in 2007. It's the female, it was the, the men's version of For Her. Uh, and actually the team that did this one was, uh, the, the team that did For Her, I'm sorry, was uh, Francis Kurtzajan and Christine Nagel. You guys know Christine Nagel is now, um, again, as of filming this, she sh as of airing this, I would imagine she'll probably be the uh, head fragrance uh, director at Hermes, taking over for, for Jean-Claude Elena. As far as Francis Curtijan, uh goes, he did do this one by himself. That resume is very thorough. Uh, he did Le Mal for Jean-Paul Gaultier, probably one of the top three biggest men's selling fragrances of all time, at least top five. Uh, he did Eau Noir for Christian Dior, their Privé line. He actually did Holy Water for, for Demeter. He did Miracle Homme um, for Lancôme. Now, I keep it 100 on this show, you guys know it. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of, of Francis Curtijan. You know, two of my, my, my fragrance brothers, uh, and not to jack the term, fragrance brothers, Others, but 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 two guys I, I love in this game Carlos uh, and Steven read a lessons interviewed him at, at Oswald and I caught the interview they're talking about his new uh, his fragrance that he introduced was new at the time called Aqua Vitae and I thought they were asking really good questions and I just didn't like the way he, he answered now that could be a total misunderstanding on my part but he just seemed really dismissive of a lot of questions and sort of like he didn't have time for it you know um, just like above questions that I think you're going to get asked when you create something as personal as a perfume. So again, that's not to say he's a bad guy or I'm right. I'm just saying in that interview, I didn't like the way he came off to those guys. So I just keep it a hundred. Um, I also don't think that his line, his niche line, Maison Francis Cartesian, I don't think it's it's the best thing from Slice Slice bread you know i think it's a, it's it's bland uh, a lot of it you know i think the oud collection is really good but it's it's almost 400 bucks a bottle uh i think poor poor le soir is really daring um the rest minus amorous which is an awesome fragrance the rest of it in that regular price p price tier for them doesn't float my boat uh, i appreciate aqua universalis forte but again i think the price point for it is, is silly um notes on and again so i want to be clear francis cartesian did this one notes on this one are violet leaf patchouli amber and musk these come in 50 and 100 ml sizes online guys you're gonna to find this anywhere between uh, 50 and 100 dollars i caught my 50 ml bottle for 45 dollars on amazon now as far as your presentation goes i don't want to dig out the, the box it's just a gray box that says narcissus or rodriguez for him the bottle i actually really like uh, it's got this gray uh paint it looks like the bottle was painted on the inside i suspect that so light can't get to the juice there is no sticker uh the cap is plastic and not that heavy and the atomizer works fine so you look at that bottle i think it's cool um it's very minimalist and, and the scent is sort of like that we'll get back to that but uh, I, I i do like the gray background with the white lettering i think that's pretty neat um and as far as this scent goes it's a really good scent you know i think that if francis kirktajan had put this in his collection of niche i think people would pay those prices because it's really unique and it has this this high quality simpleness to it that i actually have come to expect from, from francis kirktajan i think he's at his best when he's really not using a million notes and it's just producing simple quality fragrances um, I don't know if there's anything I can compare to this because it, it, it has that unique smell and it gets likened a lot to wet pavement after the rain and I totally get it and I think what that is is the violet leaf and musk meeting in the middle uh, it's such a gorgeous blend and it's really it's really not that easy to describe because it's musk violet leaf and patchouli that's all um, but it that leads to something i mean i know i say simple but it doesn't smell simple uh it is simple but it it, it kind of tricks you and this one gets called a fougere a lot i understand that classification i don't feel like it's a fougere it doesn't smell that green to me to me it's ozonic and it's metallic and it's a little bit earthy and it's it's tough to make comparisons but because the accord that the, the, the three notes make the violet leaf the patchouli and, and the musk is just different it's just like on another tier it's creative uh, i think it's cage shaking um, as it dries down i actually get a little bit of vetiver added in an earthy like rooty vetiver and the violet leaf tones that down a bit for me for the most part so with this one i know guys it's hard to explain i'm doing a bad job of it but it's violet leaf 
musk and patchouli uh, very good performance on this one nothing off the hook it's not an EDP but it still has Francis Curtis on quality to it very much unisex awesome spring and fall time scent you could rock this in any season I think except the dog days or summer when it'll probably get too cloying and you could do this office definitely I think casual uh, dressed up as well if someone wanted to get this one but but wants something different or not as maybe daring as this one yeah you know guys you know my ultimate violet leaf fragrance is fahrenheit um atelier does one called sous la toit on the roof or, or under the roof um which uh which has some violet leaf in it and vetiver um and bulgarian man actually uh, reminds me a little bit of this because it's very sort of um, clean and, and, and musky. I think if, but it is very unique. I think if someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this, they tell you it's unique, it's a good price, you're gonna get that quality you expect from, from this perfumer, and it's really different from other designer scents. I think on the flip side, you might hear, um, it's a little out there in terms of what it is. It's not for everyone. It's not that versatile if you don't like it. Um, and it could be really off-putting to some people. I could definitely see that. I dig this, um, and so I'm fair. And this is an 8.5 out of 10. Everything is on point except um, sort of the situational ways to wear this fragrance. I know you could, I said you could do it office and casually, but... Uh, but it is it is a little bit difficult to, to wear it and, and be complimented on it. And there are just better men's violet scents out there. You know, to me, the god is Fahrenheit. Uh, Shaman by Mint, I think, is a better uh, violet fragrance. Um, Green Irish Tweed has a nice violet hit. And this just isn't Fahrenheit or Green Irish Tweed. You know what I'm saying? But on the designer side, it hangs tough and it's really respectable. The bottle's cool. It's good quality. It's a decent performer. And most importantly, this is a designer scent that's really a niche scent. And I think those are the type of scents that we all all want because we get bored with what's going on in the designer game and so for something like this to be out there that that really pushes the envelope like that's just dope for 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 frag heads um and um and i think you should check it out you know if you're in the designer thing and you sort of want to take a left then then i would definitely check this one out and uh i think you'll enjoy it you know at the very least you're going to get a very different experience from from what you're used to and once you're into perfumes for a long enough time you start to crave different experiences and, and just different smells and different combinations of notes and so um I think this this does that really well. So if you have any questions, guys, please feel free to reach out. You know what it is. Fast forward, already got my next out and wrote and recorded. You kiddies better look for it. And the final still spinning. Look, the world's still.